Hi, it is time for another of Laura's lessons. I'm so passionate about the weather. I fell in love with it at school at the age of 14. I've been so fortunate to study weather, present weather, and work at the RAF. And all along, it is the weather forecast that has helped me to do everything I've been able to do to present to you guys. So if you've ever wondered how weather forecasts are made and how you can help, well, here is how. Weather forecasts are made using observations from all around the world. We need to predict what is happening right now to know what is going to be happening in the future. And this is done through satellite observations, there's radars, we've got ship observations, planes flying through the sky, and we also have observers, hundreds, thousands of people around the world who go out every hour on the hour look at the weather, look at the observations, note them down, and they send them to the Met Office's supercomputer. So, we want you to go outside. You can go outside at any time of day, in the morning, afternoon, or evening, but take a look at what the weather is doing and then record it. Now, these are the most important aspects of weather that we need to know about. So first of all, we need to know about temperature. So if you have a thermometer, and surprisingly I do here, uh, we measure our temperature in Celsius. Note down the temperature, so the day you head out, wind speed is one. Now, you need an anemometer for that. It's like a stick with little cups on. The wind goes round and round and round. Most people don't have one of those. So you can actually find out what the wind speed is by looking at what the weather is doing outside. So I've come up to my garden and using the Beaufort scale, which was developed in 1805, devised by a hydrographer, Francis Beaufort, who ended up being the Rear Admiral Sir Francis Beaufort. Uh, the Royal Naval Officer, he came up with a list of wind speeds and different things that happened when they were that wind speed. So if you don't have an eye monitor, if you can't figure out what the wind is exactly, you can look at nature around you. So if you look at the trees here and look at the leaves, they're moving Mama a little. Party. You're having a party? Mummy's just recording a really quick video about the boat that scale. <laughs> uh, the leaves are moving, not in constant motion, gentle breeze. Um, so, if you look at the Beaufort scale, but actually winds felt on face, leaves rustle and veins move, that is four to seven miles an hour, a light breeze, that is Beaufort scale two. It's not quite a three because the wind leaves aren't moving all the time. So there you go, Beaufort scale two, a light breeze, winds between four and seven miles an hour, just gently moving. And I've checked the latest observations from the local airport and the winds there are seven miles an hour. So, spot on, perfect. Wind direction, well, you can do that by, again, looking at the direction that the trees are moving, or you can hold up a piece of grass or a leaf and see which way it flows. The weather, an obvious one. Look, is it rainy? Is it sunny? Is it sleet? Is it fog? Is it snow? All of these different types of weather, drizzle, mist, um, you can write that one down. Cloud is another one. Now, when we do weather observations to look at the cloud, we look about octaves of cloud. Now, we look up at the sky and cut it into eight. So think of a cake or a pie, and you cut it into eight portions, and that is how we look at the clouds. So, if the sky is covered with, if you look at the sky and there's a patch of cloud here, and there's a patch of sat cloud, say roughly there, and a patch of cloud roughly there, and a patch of cloud roughly there, but there's some clear gaps as well. Four of the eight are covered in cloud, therefore half of the sky is covered in cloud. So we say that would be half cover of cloud. So you could write that one down on your cloud cover. Rainfall is the next one, and you can make your very own rain gauge, and I am going to show you how. It's a very, very simple one. So here is my glass bottle that I have actually already put markers on at 20, 40 and 60 millimetres by using a measuring jug and putting liquid in and then measuring it out. So that's one way of checking, by looking at the side of your jar. Then you put the rain, uh, the cylinder in here to catch the rain as it falls down and then it will go down into the bottom of the bottle. So here it comes. Here is the rain. Ooh. And we can have a look here. And it is somewhere between 40 and 60 millimetres there. So we can guess that is around about 50 millimetres of rain. Or alternatively, of course, if you don't have markers inside of your bottle, you could just put it 
into a measuring jug and you get exactly the same result. Good luck making your own measuring jug. And then you can put that in your garden, you can put it down on the ground, maybe just dig a little bit of a hole, ask your parents permission first, check that that's okay, um, to make sure that it's stable and then you leave it. And hopefully there will be some rainfall for you to gather, say after 24 hours, and then you can just pour that into a measuring cylinder and see how much rain has fallen. And you can note that one down. And then pressure. I am lucky enough to have a barometer and that measures pressure. So if you have a barometer, you can add in the pressure, but if you don't, don't worry. So there we go. So you can go out, write down all the different weather that you see every single day and know that hundreds and thousands of people are doing that all around the world every single day. So then what happens to these weather observations? Well, from all around the world, they then go into the Met Office's supercomputer just like this, but the Met Office are having a huge upgrade with one of the biggest supercomputers in the world. It will be in the future, next couple of years, the most powerful supercomputer for processing weather observations. At the moment, 215 billion weather observations, like the ones that you're going to be taking, go into the Met Office supercomputer every single day, and then it crunches the numbers, and it does an astonishing, at its peak, 16,000 trillion calculations every single second. That is like you getting everybody you know, and then some, all of those mobile phones together. The power technology of this is absolutely amazing. The Met Office also have this really cool website called WOW, Weather Observations, a website where people who have weather observations in their garden, measuring equipment, can send those observations in. So if you have proper technical equipment like those anemometers, they can be sent in to the Met Office and that can be added to make these Met Office forecasts. So once you've got all your observations, once they go into the supercomputer, it models the atmosphere and what is happening right now. It then runs through time into the future to predict the weather forecast. As well as that, over a thousand experts at the Met Office, forecasters, we interpreting that data and that is then transported to me through guidance. I speak to the Met Office every single day and that is how we then give you the weather forecast that we have on TV. But it's not just here that we use weather forecasts, they're used in rail networks, at airports, the supermarkets, long range projections to see if people are going to be needing barbecues, if it's going to turn cold, if people are going to change what they eat. So it's used in many, many different ways. So that is how your weather observations that you take turn into Met Office's forecast using the supercomputer that does 16,000 trillion calculations every single second. It is absolutely astonishing. So if you go out and take your weather observations, don't forget to send your pictures of you doing this and your homemade rain gauges using hashtag Laura's Lessons.